uni 5.1 polynomial functions. The objectives of this class is to learn how to sketch the graph of a polynomial functions. So we have to pay attention to the words sketch. It means we don't know exactly every single point of the polynomial functions. You just have a general idea of how the polynomial functions looks like. Well, in order to do that, we have to know two concepts. First, the end behavior of the polynomial functions. The next thing is the turning points of the polynomial functions. Based on these two concepts, we can sketch the graph of the polynomial functions. So before we look into the concept of end behavior and turning point of a polynomial function, we first have to take a look of the standard form of a polynomial function because it tells us the end behavior and the turning point of the polynomial functions. I'll give you an example. Here's a polynomial function. So pay attention to a couple things. First, P of X, which stands for polynomial functions. The next thing you have to pay attention, we call this the leading term. Let me change it to pencil to wait for you. So this, we call it a leading term. The reason we call it a leading term because it has the greatest power here. Look, so we have 3, the power 3, 2, and 1, and 0. So the reason that it's a leading term because it has the greatest power. The next thing you have to know is this, the constant flow right here. We call this a leading coefficient. These two terms will determine the end behavior and turning points of the polynomial function. There are only four types of end behavior of a polynomial function. First one, up and up. So when I say up and up, I mean the graph's going to be like this, up and up. Remember, we don't know for sure what happened in between, but we know, as the name implies, end behavior. We just know the end of the curve going up on the left and going up on the right. So the next type is down and down. So again, down like this, but we don't know for sure what happened in between. The next one is up and down. So up is like this. I have to move this things away. Down is like this. The last one is down and up. So it's going to be like this. One more time, what happened in between, we don't know for sure. But we know the end behavior of this polynomial function is down and up. Let's take a look at the relationship between the standard form of a polynomial function and its end behavior. So the first thing we have to pay attention to is... The leading term a x to the n power of the polynomial function. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have a polynomial function p of x equal to say 3x to the n, I mean to the fourth power plus, I don't really care what the remaining terms are because the end behavior of a polynomial function is only related to the leading term right here. So first we have to take a look of the leading coefficients. Leading coefficient, which is the value of a. Okay. So a is 3, which is a positive. Okay. And the next thing we have to take a look is 
the n power right here, 4. So 4 is an even number. Based on these two pieces of information, we can conclude because a is positive, n is even, so we have up and up n behavior. So if I draw it, it's going to be like this. It's up and up. I don't really know exactly what's the shape of the curve in between this, but I know for sure it's going to be up and up for the end behavior. Now that we have learned the relationship between the in behavior and the standard form of polynomial function, the next thing we have to look at is the turning point. Let's learn what a turning point is. So in these two graphs, the first one, we have two turning points right here. This is the first one, and this is the second one. And this one, we have only one turning point. Here's the rule of thumb for the number of turning points that you can find in a polynomial function. It all depends on the nth degree of the polynomial function of the leading term. If n is the degree of the leading term of the polynomial function, then it has most n minus 1 turning points. Let me give you an example. Say we have a polynomial function equal to x to the fourth powers. I don't really care what the, uh, what the remaining terms are because we know it's the n degree determine the number of the turning points. So in this case, n is equal to 4. So the greatest number of turning points that this particular function has is 4 minus 1 equal to 3. So in other words, it could have three turning points the most, or there's only one turning point because it's an even degree polynomial function. Now let me show you all this in a graph. So in this case, say the graph is a polynomial function, uh, x to the fourth power plus uh, 3x to the cube, and so on and so forth. We know this is an even polynomial function because it's 4 right here. And we know the number, the greatest number of turning points, which could be n minus 1, which is 3. So here's the three turning points, 1, 2, and 3. Or it could be only one turning point right here. right here. There's one more thing about turning point that you have to remember. Take a look at this one. It's a very interesting one. In this particular case, we don't call this a turning point. We are going to call this one an inflection point instead. But of course, if you have a cubic function like this, we still have two turning points here. Now let's put everything together. If we are asked to sketch the graph of a polynomial function, like this one, we have to pay attention to the leading term right here. We have to look at two things. First, the n power. Next is the value of a. So since a is negative 4, which is a negative number, and n equal to 3 is an odd number, from these two pieces of information, we know the ending behavior is going to be 
up and down. Now that we know the end behavior of this polynomial functions is up and down. We know the graph is going to be like this. Another thing we can get from this standard form is the number of the turning points. So because the end power is 3, so we know the greatest number of turning points that this polynomial function can have is n minus 1, which is equal to 2. Since it's an odd number, we can only have a given number of turning points. So it could be either 2 or 0. So if, this is, if there are two turning points in this polynomial function, it's going to be like this. So we have two turning points right here. And if there's none, there's no turning points in this particular polynomial function, we know this is up and down. So the graph is going to be like this. We don't call this one a turning point. We call this an inflection point. So which one is the one that represents this function? We don't know. But we can have this one or this one. We need some more information to determine which is which one is exactly the one that we are talking about here.